For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Psalm 34, 7, New Living Translation. The Indian pastor knelt quietly in the side room before the meeting started, when suddenly the door burst open and a man came in, an angry man with a gun pointed at him. He shouted, get out, get out now or I will kill you. We, we don't want Christians in this village. The poor terrified pastor kneeling there praying heard himself laugh not something you should do in that kind of situation usually, but he heard himself laugh and say, put your toy away. The man began to shake and scream all over as he said, this is not a toy, it's real, it's loaded, and I will kill you right now if you don't leave. But just then there was a noise and the door opened and the man bolted out the door as the global mission pioneers came in to pray with the pastor. The pastor's still kneeling there, shaking all over, and he says, I, I, I think we should cancel the meetings, at least for a few days, or, or maybe we need to go hold them somewhere else. That man just threatened to kill me. Oh, no, please, pastor, the men begged. Don't cancel the meetings. We've been praying and planning and working for months, and many people have come. They're waiting to hear about Jesus. Don't cancel the meetings. Finally, the pastor said, Okay, if I perish, I perish. But as he walked onto the platform, he was having a hard time thinking about the sermon for that evening. He noticed people with their hands under their coats like they were hiding something. He noticed others with big lumps under their robes. And he expected at any moment to be shot. He wondered what it felt like to be shot. But the meeting went on and nothing happened. Night after night, he saw those people come in with their hand under their robe or big lumps under their robes and nothing happened. God was blessing the meetings, and little by little, he almost forgot about that man and his threats. He was glad he hadn't quit and run away. Then one night, as he knelt there in that side room again, just before the meeting started, there was a knock, and he said, come in, and almost immediately wished he hadn't, because there stood that same man again. Oh, don't worry, Pastor, the man said. I didn't bring my gun tonight. You see, every night my friends and I have come intending to kill you. We had our clubs, our guns, our knives, but you said some nice things and we decided we can't kill him tonight. If we do, the people will think we didn't agree with what he said. So we decided that's okay, we'll kill him tomorrow night. But the next night, you also said some very interesting things, and each night, and now I'm a changed man, and I want to give my heart to Jesus and be baptized. On the day of his baptism, this man was the first one out into the water. The pastor was just getting ready to baptize him, when suddenly he noticed the global mission pioneers wading into the water and making signs and whispering, No! No! Stop! Stop! Don't baptize him! What's wrong? the pastor asked. Pastor, they hissed. Do you see all those police back there? We don't know what's going on, but we think we better not have the baptism. Let's do it some other time, some other place. Look, the pastor whispered. A few weeks ago, when I wanted to cancel the meetings, you urged me not to, and God protected us, and we went ahead. And we'll go ahead with the baptism, too. If those police want to watch, let them watch. The members burst into praise and song as the man came up out of the water. 
And as he started to wade back toward shore, the police started to wade into the water toward him. They circled him quickly, grabbed him roughly, handcuffed his hands behind his back, dragged him out of the water and threw him into the back seat of a police vehicle and took off. It turned out he was one of the most wanted criminals in that part of the country. He had killed many people through the years. But six months went by as he sat there in prison, reading his Bible, studying, praying, singing. Six months went by and one day the prison warden came to his cell and unlocked the door and said, you can go now, sir. Sir, yes, you can go now. We're sorry we arrested you and have kept you in prison all these months. We made a mistake and thought you were someone else. Oh no, the man replied. I am the man you thought I was. No, the warden replied, you can't be. That man was angry and evil. You're loving and kind and respectful. We're sorry we got mixed up. We must have arrested the wrong person. You can go now. Oh, dear Lord, thank you for the change you have made in each of our lives. We are not the people we used to be. Continue both to change and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.